Hey back folks. All this video is for uh, Jay the Aussie, Matty VT93, and pretty much anyone who is thinking about using a computer power supply for electrolysis. Now I've done this a few years ago using an old AT or even earlier power supply which didn't have the sensitive electronics that some of these new ones have in them, and it worked quite well. Uh, I'm going to try it with a much more beefier power supply. This one's a, uh, it's a Ritmo AMD Athlon Duron power supply, 450 watts. No, uh, what is it? 28 amps, 3.3 volts. 37 amps, 5 volts. 21 amps, 12 volts. I'm going to be using the 12 volts for this test, but I might also try the other two voltages. Uh, it's all colour coded on this label. Actually, it even tells you that green is your uh, power on. So green to black will power the unit on. Uh, what I'm going to do is separate all these wires up and pair them up with uh, ring terminals. So all yellow together, all black and all red. As well as a remote power switch across one of the blacks and the gr green. Which has to be separated out. I'm not going to worry about the other leads. Uh, I've pulled more than a few of these apart in my time. and I know it's all the... Um, each, each of the yellow leads is soldered to the same trace on the PCB, same with the other colours, so you're not going to overload anything by pairing them together. They all come off the same DC bus coming out of the uh, filter capacitors. OK, well I can't access the current electrolysis power supply because it's behind that shelf and has an access cover on it. So, thankfully I don't blow them up often enough to have to worry about moving this thing, so I can't show you the current one, although I do have a grid with fans attached to it over the top of it. But this is identical to what I'm using at the moment. It's come out of another DI620 Minolta photocopier. Multi-voltage switch mode supply, obviously. Um, this one here is just a spare I keep in the cupboard just in case. I know that one will blow up one day. I'm not sure if I've got another spare. I think I do actually have two or three of them. But this is the... Uh, DC side. I've got all the right connectors and things for it. That other one just plugs straight in onto a loom that I made up. I'm using the 24 volt rail. I think it's about 20 amps. This one's made in 1998. Obviously that's the primary side. This one here was what I was using before it. This is from a Minolta DI 230 or something, a smaller black and white copier. Still a great power supply. I may still have looms to attach to it, but you can see the PCB traces are all joined together in certain areas. They're the uh, main DC bus, 24 volts. Obviously you pop these little thermal li fusible links out and replace them with bits of wire when they blow. That's a 13.13 amp fusible link. And I just replace them with bits of wire. The problem I've found with these supplies is that the traces carrying main DC 24 volts are a bit thin. And after a long run overnight, those traces will burn and just pop like a fusible link. So I find having to run bits of copper wire, just bridging it back to the caps, back to wherever, and reinforcing those traces makes it last a lot longer. I actually never blew the old one, I just threw it out. But... If you're interested in playing with one of these things, you're welcome to buy one off me. Cheap, cheap. You can have one for ten bucks plus shipping, I suppose, because I've got three of them. And these are, they came out of working copiers. Uh, of course, if it doesn't work, well, I suppose I could get another one. But, yeah, I don't normally do a like, warranty on electronics, so I could power it up and test it anyway. Alright. I don't have any rectangular tubs or anything at the moment, so I'm just using an empty uh, plaster bucket. Work piece is a old GM V8 main front pulley. And the anode's just a bit of scrap steel out on the trailer. I've just got to screw the neutral lead together and we'll be ready to throw the main switch. Just using the mushroom switch as my cutout. Not plugged in at the moment. Normally an emergency stop, it's just a standard normally closed switch. So 
So in that position it's closed and working. Push it, circuit opens. It's designed to break the, con break the continuity with a contactor coil or something like that on a motor or pump or whatever. Shit hits the fan, you run for the mushroom switch. Off it goes. I know I've got some normally open or normally closed toggle switches around somewhere but I couldn't find them at the time so that'll do. Alright, we're all hooked up. Uh, everything set and ready to go. Power supplies up. Amp meter's moved a tiny bit, but not much. But we have instant bubbles. That's good. Definitely getting current transfer, it's just the amp meter isn't reading it. I'm guessing it starts at like 15 amps and then goes up 20, 30, 40. We're just sort of out of its threshold. It works fine on the MIG welder. But I'm guessing we just need more amperage. I'll move the work piece. Oop, short. Yeah, it moves a tiny bit. That was a short. Now, well, amp meter doesn't work, but bubbles means progress. We'll let it run for a while. Well, it's been about 20 minutes now and she's doing just fine. Amps haven't changed, it's still pretty low. But I guess it doesn't really need it in such a small tank small work piece working just fine you can even hear the difference in speed for the PSU sound uh, fan it sounds different it slows down a little bit once the work piece is in there so it's definitely drawing juice just these amp meters aren't designed for low current applications good for high current but I'd call that a success so overall just colour code your wires, get all the uh, yellows and blacks together green and one black is your on use a normally open and close switch, whatever you want open the circuit to switch it off close the circuit to turn it on, that's all it is it's not a momentary switch like the power on button on the computer though the main board does that it has a SCR or something like that in it to maintain power until you push the switch again. This one here, you want to short these two wires out to keep it on. As soon as you open the circuit, it shuts down. But yeah, that's working just fine. It's not warm, nice and cool. I don't see any reason why the 5 volt rail wouldn't work, but 12 volts is better than 5 volts for electrolysis wouldn't go any higher than 30 volts using other power supplies but that's about it works and one last note is to uh, set everything up then turn the power on don't turn the power on then introduce a lead or something to the circuit otherwise it'll detect the surge and probably shut down some do some don't the old AT power supplies, the 486 power supplies I've used before, didn't mind. But I imagine a fairly sensitive thing like this Pentium 4 or um, Athlon power supply wouldn't like it. But apart from that, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work, just like the other switch modes that I've used before. And Well, it is working. How long? Don't know. Uh, I'm not going to run it long enough to find out whether or not it burns out, but I'm sure somebody will.